What's up, YouTubers? Welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone's doing well out there. Today's video is more of a different video than usual. It's more talking and then some playing. I wanted to talk about um, my Overdrive special from Wellagen and I guess really Dumble Amps. I know Dumble is a very controversial word on YouTube, maybe. You either like them or you don't, or you think they're overrated. But that style of amp, I love. I haven't played a real Dumble yet, but that style of amp really attracts me and really draws me in. So let's talk about them. So let's go. So as you all know, I do have a overdrive special type amplifier built by Wellagen. So now let's go back and say, why did I get it? When did I get it? What were my goals for the amp, etc. So in 2017, I started hearing and I guess listening to these amps, Dumbles. Uh, as you guys know, I'm a huge John Mary fan. That's no secret. Um, he's touring with a steel string singer. And in the past, I see he played uh, still steel string singers and um, overdrive specials. Around that time also, I'm seeing Joe Bonamassa on YouTube. And he has two overdrive specials in his rig, a combo and a head. And then I see a video of him. I think from 2015, yeah, 2015, uh, with Rock Candy Funk Party at the Baked Potato. And his rig was his 1960 Les Paul, I think it was, into a Fender Twin, into a um, Dumble 212 cabinet with an Odeus on top with a 2290 in the Dumbelator. And that was the tone that was at the time in my head. So that was wow. Then I got into Robin Ford. And I read that and I see videos of him playing a black one or a tan one. Um, I think it was that summer he also came to Berkeley and he played his SG through the black ODS with the matching 2x12. And that was an incredible live tone and insanely loud. Really, really loud. And I was like in the sixth row, but still insanely loud. Um, who else? Stevie Ray Vaughan. Steel string singers. So a lot of people at the time that I was listening to were playing these Dumble amplifiers. Oh, yeah. Also, Larry Carlton. I watched videos of him playing his ODS with his Les Paul, I guess, special with two P90s, um, which is incredible. So my goal at the time and tone at the time was let's get this tone. So the hunt started and I came across Wellagen through some YouTube videos and I was sold immediately. Um, now the question was, okay, how do I get one of the amps? They're not available. Oh, I have to order them and they take six to eight months to arrive. Custom order, all to your spec. So I'm in. It'll take time, but I'm in. And like anything, big purchase in the gear world for us gearheads. If one piece of gear comes in, one has to go. So I did sell a two rock amp at the time to fund the Overdrive special and the process began. Uh, we talked on the phone a couple of times, me and Jelly, Wellagen, um, and it was all as you would imagine. What kind of music do you play? What kind of guitar do you play? Uh, what's the tone in your head? Do you have some examples? What do you want to get out of this amp? And I was a little overwhelmed, but I sort of knew what I wanted to sound like. And I sent clips of him, specifically clips of Bonamassa at the Baked Potato. Because at the time, I think that was the epitome, like the top tone that I've heard. And then as well as what kind of speaker. And the speaker that we chose was an EV. Insanely heavy. Insanely heavy. Um, so the process began. We would exchange texts or emails about parts coming in and process of the build. So super exciting. And then fast forward to February 2018. All this started in summer 2017. Uh, February 2018, the amp arrives one day, and then the next day, I think the speaker arrived, the EV, which was, oh my God, so heavy. Uh, and the amp was amazing. At the time, I did only have the Overdrive Special and the Hard Deluxe. And they're great. I mean, Hard Deluxe is very fender clean, and the Dumbles in your face, punchy, with a singing Overdrive tone. It was also great because living in an apartment in Boston, I could 
put the amp master a little higher and then use the effects to, to bring the overall volume down, which is very helpful. Still to this day, a must. Um, and I've played it here and there, and occasionally I found myself maybe a little scared of the amp because it was so honest and so in your face that if you weren't playing well, you would hear it easily. Uh, every mistake would be heard and would be audible in your face. No hiding, no reverb, no, dis no delay, nothing. So immediate, fast responding, where I was so used to being with a Fender blackface type sound in the Heart of the Lux, scoop mids, reverb as a pillow for the tone and everything. That going really cold turkey with the style of amplifier, no reverb, no delay in the loop, just in your face, kind of, I guess, intimidated me. I still played it. I still wanted to get along with it. And then I moved to LA in March 2018. And the word dumble is, I guess, more commonly used. Now, I know some people that own one, people who have borrowed one in the past. And to this day, when you're watching this, there's currently one for sale in North Hollywood for 110000 which is insane. Um, so move to LA, get more accustomed to that term being thrown around. And some, I'm exposed to more audio clips and recordings that have those amps. And still, I'm still finding myself playing more the Howard Deluxe because I think I I feel more safe, right? Um, but occasionally, when I would have to grab and go stuff, I would take the ODS to force myself to play it, and also because it being so immediate and so in your face, it really forces you to think before you play to make sure that you have in your head what you want to play and project it, hoping that it's as if you heard it in your head. If that makes sense. Um, I played here and there around town. Take the recordings where I could really crank it up. And that's when it really comes alive. Um, 2019 comes around. Same thing. I'm playing it more. Getting much more used to it. Now, I found some more recordings of Robin Ford that I like. Videos start coming out of Ariel Pose and playing Dumble at Carter. Um Bonamassa still plays his combos, etc. Mayor, I've seen more videos of him playing his. A great video of Mayor playing an overdrive special combo is at Hotel Cafe. I think that's 2016, I think it was. Um, so I'm st I know the amp now really well. Still in your face and still, st still as honest as it can be. Now, you play bad, you sound bad. You play good, you sound incredible. All these are meant to accentuate the good in your playing. Um, and besides the playing part, I got more into the history of the amps, right? When did they start? How are they evolved? How are Dumbo and the character that he is that apparently if you try to reach him too much, he'll just ignore you totally. I hear stories of, of people who were supposed to get Dumbles in LA that never got them because Howard just forgot or just didn't want to give it to them. So a weird character is Howard Dumble. Um, but extremely grateful to own one of his style of amplifiers. No, his overdrive special combo. Twenty, sorry, end of twenty nineteen comes around, and Wellington reaches out and says, "I have some upgrades if you want to do your amp." I'm all for it. Love it. I was noticing the amp had a lot of bottom end, a lot of high end. Um, it was a lot of gain, really compressed. So I said, "Let's tame the EQ a little bit." take some of the game out and in the overdrive channel make it less compressed right so my idea was it so that when i go to the clean channel it's in your face clean mids everything and the overdrive channel was an extension of that clean tone so it wasn't like you're going to amp totally different it's just a different level of the i guess the preamp would be a couple months went by comes back the amp sounds just as I wanted it. He even put a gain trim pot in the amp in the um I guess I mean the preamp section. So if I want I can open the amp up and add more gain to it so I can have more overall gain. Which is awesome. Uh but I like low gain. I think it sounds best. <laughs> also because I think with low gain 
playing humbuckers more, the humbuckers will push the gain just a little bit. And then if I go to single coils, like on my Silver Sky or the Telecaster or the PRS uh, Super Eagle, it'll result in a less gain overall sound with single coils. So really tried to make the sound very versatile. Aiming to be the best with my Les Paul, but it still had to work with other guitars. And it does just that. Um, in 2020, I also changed the speaker. I put a Celestion. I went to the studio one day in Burbank with my amp and ran through 212 with 1265s, uh, 112s, a 112 with Celestion Redback and an EV and et cetera, et cetera. And the speaker that currently is in it is a Celestion Redback 150 watt, right? Because it's a 100 watt cap. Uh, amp needs enough power in the speaker to handle it. Um, and also that same period last year, I experimented much more with the effects loop, putting reverb, putting delay in the loop, trying to do the Robin Four type thing where you put the Strymon timeline in the loop in the 20 to 90 setting um, so you can have that sort of sound. The amp isn't a copy of his, but you can get in the ballpark if you want to. Um, and that brings us to here. The amp is still in rotation in my studio, as you can see. Um, when I record videos, though, as you probably noticed, I do use more of the Fender Hard Deluxe. Um, one, because it's plugged into the aux, so it's sound recording. And uh, number two is because it's just more accessible. Um, it's more of an amp that you could go to your local guitar center or local guitar store and just find one and pick it up, and it's super affordable. Whereas the Overdrive Special Type amp is the opposite. Not accessible, not affordable. It's a big purchase, that amp. Um, it's like a fridge. You buy one, and it'll last you forever, um, which this amp so far has. It's been through a lot. It moved cross-country with me, and it's still doing its job, and it's still sounding incredible. Um, so that is the story if it was a story, if that all made sense, <laughs> about my over that special amp, how I got into those amplifiers and how I subsequently got one. Um, and I love it. It's a dream amp. Uh, Weldon is highly regarded, so I'm very honored to have one of his amplifiers. And it's great on the Facebook Dumble page, talking to people who have his amps and their different voicings, different Tolexes, different looks, different setups, 212, 112, or whatever. Um, so it's a dream amp. I do think in the future, um, when gigs start happening, <laughs> gigs, remember those, uh, when those are happening again, maybe I will reach out and try to get a head enclosure um, because I can borrow a 212 from the studio and the head enclosure will just make it a little more grab and go, I think, and not as heavy. Um, so yeah, that is the overdrive special amplifier. Also, maybe one that I can do a comparison video with mine versus a real one. That'd be pretty cool, wouldn't it? Uh, and as they say on YouTube, run it through their paces. <laughs> um, so yeah, so let's plug in the amp and hopefully you would have seen some B-roll during this video so far. Uh, but let's get into some playing, so let's go. Cool, all plugged in, ready to go. Les Paul, straight into the Overdrive Special. Rarely when I'm at home do I play with effects or anything, but sometimes I put reverb in the loop. Not today though, all dry. Let's look at some tones. First up, neck pickup clean. Great clean channel. So good, you may not even need reverb. 
and still in your face, right? So now let's check out the bridge pickup. Right, same, very in your face. So now let's check out the oral drive channel. And like I said, less gain, not super compressed, more of an extension of the clean channel. Here is the neck pickup. It's also very dynamic, sensitive. Dynamic is also a fun word on YouTube for guitar. You play on 10, bring it down to the seven, right? Do everything. Bridge pickup. Awesome bridge pickup. If you do pick hard, which I'll do for a couple seconds, you can sort of get that Robin Ford type thing. Right? Even more, if you put the volume higher, which is hard to do in the apartment, and put the Strymon timeline in the 2290 setting, put that in the loop, well, you're basically at Robin Ford territory. Um, so in conclusion to all this fun video, that is the Overdrive Special Amp and how I use it. Um, it's an amp that is a dream to have an incredible clone of it. And like I said, maybe one day I can film a video with a real Dumble ODS versus mine. Um, and yeah, it's a dream to play. It's a privilege to play every single day. And I'm very grateful to own one of Wellagen's amplifiers. Um, maybe in the future, I go crazy and get another one or a steel string singer. Oh, I wish. Um, so yeah, let me know if you guys like these type of amplifiers. I know they're very controversial on YouTube. Is Dumble Amps overrated? Who makes clones that you guys like? And what are your some favorite Dumble tones? Let me know in the comments below. Um, if you want me to also... You play, do more videos with this amp. Let me know and I can do that as well. Um, so yeah, that's today's video, guys. Hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, please press like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time.